Okay, so. We're gonna make a cup of cola. First off. We got a pork butt. That's sour. Rinse off. thing we want to do you got this part of the shoulder blade mm -hmm. the bone and then you got this little part see this seam right here so we're gonna take this and you're just gonna kill this back okay and this this muscle here this is your copa muscle this is what you use for your cup of cola this this right here and you can pretty much break all this up just with your fingers if you want to get a knife in there to make it a little bit easier, make it a little go a little faster, it's fine. All right, so now that we got everything trimmed up, this is going to be our cut of meat that we're going to work with. Actually, I'm going to take that piece of that off. So now when we get to this point, this is where the recipe comes in. So, what I like to do, take it off the cutting board, put it on a pan. So, now, anything to mix all this up with, it's great. And what we're going to do, We're going to follow the recipe here and we're going to start with our kosher salt. You got about a four pound pork butt. You're going to do, uh, what the hell is it for the salt? Six tablespoons. So we got six tablespoons of salt. We got two tablespoons of sugar. We got one teaspoon of our pink curing salt. Uh, two teaspoons of fresh crushed black pepper. Oh, where's my next? Rosemary. We got two tablespoons of that. Actually, I wouldn't two tablespoons. That's a tablespoon. Tablespoon of rosemary, tablespoon of Uncle Joe's fennel. And fresh thyme, if you got it, two or three sprigs. If you don't, tablespoon of the dry stuff that comes in the bag. And there's my bay leaves. Two bay leaves if they're big. If not, throw a little bit extra. And then half a teaspoon of nutmeg. If you can find the nutmegs, grind them up. Fresh is better. If not, then you can use the stuff that comes in the little, little container. Four garlic cloves. Not ten, not twelve. And we're gonna mix all this stuff up and then we'll be back. All right, so now we just took all that stuff out, got it all mixed up, looks all nice and pretty. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this all over this and we're gonna get this all set up and get it nice. I wanna make sure to cover every little part of this, every little nook and cranny. If you got spots like this down here, Take it and just make sure that we get in there all good.
And then after we get this whole thing coated, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put it in a Ziploc bag, we're gonna throw it in the fridge, we're gonna let it sit there anywhere from a week to two weeks. And while it's in there, every couple days you just wanna flip it over and make sure that you know, all your juices aren't washing the spices off of one side or the other or any of that stuff. And all this rubbed on. We'll get it backed up. All right. Now we've got this all covered up. Take this, go in our Ziploc bag. That's a redneck vacuum sealer for you. All right, now two things. We're gonna weigh it. If you got one of these scales where it does the kilograms, makes it easy because it's easier to divide. So we're at 1800. Mark that on the bag, and we're gonna use that number when we dry it out later. Here we are, we got our meat is cured. Now we're gonna take it out, we're gonna rinse all this cure off. So you don't want this stuff to stay on there, it doesn't need to stay on there, because this flavor is already in there. So. You're not scrubbing it off, you're just getting the bulk of it. So, what we got over here in the bowl is a quarter cup of smoked paprika, <clears throat> two teaspoons of cayenne pepper, we've got a teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper, and then I just put in a couple dashes of the red pepper flakes. And what we want to do here I want to make sure everything gets covered. Right. Over here, we've got our collagen sheet from the sausage maker. Thank you. 
get it all nice and wrapped up here. I like to trim it up, I don't like to leave a lot of overlap. I'm sure it would dry just fine with the overlap, but I figure if it only has to dry out through one layer, it's probably better to dry it through two. We're just going to put the netting on here. I'm not going to fill the whole thing because I don't have... Usually what you do, you just take a two-liter bottle, an empty one, cut the end off, pull this netting over the uh, neck of it, use the end, have the meat in the end, and then try to feed it through. But I don't have that, so this is going to take a while. But I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, so here we go with everything wrapped up with the twine on it. Um, make sure you push all your air bubbles out. So as you can see, everything here has got a nice tight fit. And... We weigh it beforehand. This just weighed out at 1,900. We take 65% uh, of that. So we're gonna tag it and put 1290, 1275, whatever the math works out to be. And then we're gonna weigh it here in about a month and a half, two months and see if we're there and let it go as long as it needs to to get to that point. And since you don't have to wait, so you won't have to wait two months to see it. <clears throat> I got one that we just took out last week that had been in for two months. This is what it looks like by the time it's all dried. And that's what we get at the end. I'm not going to bother to eat it because you can't taste it. But anyways, that's that. Hope you enjoy.